welcome everybody to the second ever ADV podcast. A little bit of a, a update here. Last time we didn't have Super Chats enabled. Today we do have Super Chats enabled. And just for those of you that don't know what a Super Chat is, it's that little dollar sign down below. Basically, you can type, ask a question, any of your burning questions, as you said earlier. And it will pop up and it will stay highlighted. And DM, who is going to uh, you know, kind of run this entire live stream, he's going to monitor the Super Chats. And he, what are you doing, money? I'm giving you some money so you can shut up about that. OK. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Not that cheap. Just kidding. Uh, basically, what's going to happen is uh, anything that you'd like to ask us, if you've got a burning question, the best way to do it is through a super chat. They'll be curated. DM's going to make sure he writes them all down, and he's going to, you know, as long as there's not a million of them, we're, we'll answer them at the end. But we will also be answering normal questions. So, you know. Did you I know. not just say that? Yeah, but you, all I hear is like, Money, 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 sir. Oh, I appreciate that you see me like that. Yeah, That's really absolutely. nice of you. Yeah. Really, really. Uh, anyway, yeah. sorry about Top that. Pants. Yeah. Um, okay, so we may as well get just stuck into it, and we're going to start out with uh, what's new. Yeah. So you're okay. going to tell me what's new, or am I going to tell you what's new? Um, okay, I'm going to start out by talking about... We have a little clip to play, by the way, okay. so if uh, DM can help us out and get that up there. We will talk about it. All right. <clears throat> I'd like to talk about this first, if you don't mind. I don't care. I'm yeah. the one that found it. You, you can shut me up with money if you, okay. want, if you want. We'll keep it there just in okay. case. Okay. All right. Um, basically, there's this guy. His name is Simon Yu. Yeah. And, uh, well, you found him, so. Yeah. I found him on Reddit, and I only wanted to say this little piece. I found him on Reddit, and it was very surprising because the Reddit China forum yeah. is mostly people that either live in China or have, like, a burning interest in China in general. And I mm -hmm. saw a Chinese face pop up. And I was like, this guy's got to be Taiwanese or something. Turns out he was a mainland YouTuber that just started, and he's talking about China. So I watched him. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I'm going to encourage everybody to subscribe to him is because he's very out of the ordinary. Mm. Um, it's I know people like him. I know mm. lots of Chinese people. Whenever I say I've got lots of Chinese friends, it's usually people like him. Sure. People who are open-minded and they, you know, are very able to discuss what they right. feel about China and right. what they feel about uh, life in general. Right. But on the internet, it's incredibly rare because yeah. it's a huge risk. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, he's showing an incredible amount of courage mm -hmm. to go out there and actually air his, his actual personal opinion online. Mm -hmm. So that's why I... I would like you guys to go show him some support because he's really sticking his neck out. Yeah, to finish that off, I was impressed with it because not only did I, I agree to some of his points, of course disagree to some of his points, but that's not the purpose of this whole thing. It's that finally someone is actually going out of their way mm -hmm. to talk about how they feel, whether it's positive or negative about China. And yeah. that's, a, that's a super interesting perspective. Yeah, exactly. Just like you said, right. maybe I don't agree with everything he says. Right. I agree with some things, but it's not the same like written down speech right. that you hear from everyone else. <laughs> right, Anyway. exactly. Cool. So check out Simon. Yeah. Now we've got a couple pictures to show you because... Ooh, boy. Oh, this is a bit of a spicy topic. And I guess, I don't know. I thought, you know, we were talking about earlier about talking about Huawei like a month or two ago. Yeah. But now it's so popular in the news that I think most people know what the Huawei situation is, right? Yeah. And the whole thing is that the trade war surrounding it, IP mm -hmm. theft, spying... China's bad, America's bad, all this vitriol, all this kind of stuff going on, right? Yeah. But <laughs> Huawei, they made a bit of a boo-boo, a little bit of an oopsie uh, back <laughs> okay. in December 31st, okay? Okay. And you can see up here on the picture, happy 2019 from all of us at Huawei. Oh, how sweet. Our, re our resolution this new year is to give you more reasons to connect with to those that you care about. Oh, mm -hmm. I, that's, that's so lovely. But it was via Twitter for iPhone, right? little bit of an oopsie when you're trying to represent your phone brand, but yep. using an iPhone. But something more recently happened because they did it again. Yeah, they did it again. Let's, uh, let's move to the next picture, which you can see over here is another tweet. And this time it was kind of like a shot over the bow of, uh, you know, American brands. Like, oh, haha, ha, look, you know, if we chop up your Apple, you know, right. make a Huawei logo. Pretty funny. But, this is actually uh, from a Chinese diplomat to yes, another country. That is. But take a look. Twitter for iPhone. Did it again. Uh, guys, you'd think after the first, uh, you know how heads roll in China when people make a mistake and lose face, especially for like a company or something, sure. or the government? Mm -hmm. You would think that they <clears throat> wouldn't do it again. No. Next picture, please. Yeah. I would like to, before we continue and talk about what's going on sure. up here, iPhones are a status symbol mm. in China. Rich people don't use 
Chinese brands. Right. You know, they don't even use Samsung unless they love Korean opera, uh, soap operas and stuff. Right, right, right. But iPhone has always been, if you're a rich family, you have iPhones. True. You know, and also the amount of iPhones you have kind of, you know, shows how much wealth you have. That's, sure. That's why you have those things where guys buy like 100 iPhones to give to someone to propose. Right. You know right. what I mean? The, a funny thing about that, just yeah. to maybe just wrap this up a little bit, but mm -hmm. uh, your video that's coming out tomorrow when you're showing me, uh, when they have all these protests against Japan or America, whenever the government yeah, says yeah, it's yeah. okay to protest in another country, mm -hmm. um, they'll do things like smash iPhones, right? Yes. Yeah. They don't understand that the majority of iPhones are made by Chinese people being employed, right? Yes. And once you've bought that phone, it doesn't really matter, right? Sure. A lot of that money has gone to that company in China sure. to produce it. So yeah. I thought that was kind of hilarious. Yeah, he's just going to buy a new one anyway. Yeah, right. uh, okay, what you can see up there is a fake Weibo um, account that someone has made using my picture and What's my Weibo? name. What's Weibo? Weibo is kind of like the Twitter for China. It's almost identical. Yeah, it's it's got more features, I'd say. Sure, it um, does. But at the end of the day... It, there's a funny thing happening where when people are using our name on Chinese social media now, Lao86 mm. opens a day, they're actually getting blocked because reasons, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> reasons. <laughs> reasons. But uh, it's it's gotten to a point now where they're trying to impersonate us to try and make us look bad again, sure. etc. Sure. So, I actually found this um, mm. because I was trolling through the... Uh, I shouldn't use the word troll. I was scrolling. Troll, no, I guess. Trolling. Tro I was trolling through trolling. the uh, Chinese yeah. forums because we, we read Chinese, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't think they realize this. No. Um, I was going through and I see all these posts about us. People have thousands, I should say hundreds of thousands of comments about us, mm. how to attack us, how to do this and this and this. You guys have heard the whole story. Yeah. But... Yeah. What, the, what I saw was recent comments on these forums that hate us. Mm -hmm. They're like, recently I can't find any of their content reposted on Chinese internet anymore. And I checked. Most of my content and a lot of your content is now gone off of Billy Billy and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Because we're too controversial, apparently. So they can't even find the media to criticize anymore. Yeah, it's kind of funny. So they made their own. Yeah. But I would just like to um, tell everyone out there that... If you do see any kind of uh, Chinese social media uh, posts by either mm. Lao86 or myself, like this fake one over here, right. just realize it's not us. We don't post to Chinese social media anymore. No. There are a couple of reasons why. Uh, number one, it just gives people the opportunity to attack us yeah. and yeah. Uh, steal our content. So sure. whenever you post anything, you put the effort in, put in the, the subtitles, upload it to Chinese you know, social media. It gets copied, yeah. hacked up. Right misrepresented put everywhere and it's it's basically you're just handing it to them on a plate sure and there's no there's absolutely no way to earn a cent through any of that sure it's not worth our time right so it's not us yeah okay cool well let's move on to the next topic which is soft, soft power, power hour <laughs> we gotta work on like a sink there yeah you go high i go low i don't know yeah soft power today we are talking about not a whiny woman complaining about you no Today we are talking about the massive explosion of Chinese YouTubers using the blocked YouTube platform and getting incredibly popular. Yeah, DM, can you help us by hitting food? All right. So what we see here is a channel. Yeah, yeah. Now she doesn't publicly show how many subscribers she has, okay? But if you look at the actual amount of views that she has, and she is located in China, which is kind of weird. Yeah. Um, she has millions and millions of views on every single thing she does, right? And what you can see here is actually she's based, I believe she's in Yunnan province in the countryside. Mm -hmm. And they use very professional cameras, high production quality. It's all kind of set up. It's beautiful. There's drone shots. There's absolutely great macro shots. And it's just so set up, right? Absolutely. And what I found out about this when I was actually looking into it is that there is a massive push now in Chinese soft power to get on Western media like YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and create these accounts and show how can, can absolutely- Can I just sorry, sure. stop you for one second? Sure. You will not find a girl that looks like that in the rural countryside <laughs> yeah. of China. Um, absolutely not. No. I, you and I have both sure. traveled around the rural countryside. Sure. It's not to say that you won't find pretty girls in the mm -hmm. countryside, but someone of that age mm -hmm. who looks like that is not there right now. They've left. Yes, basically, if you have an attractive young woman in your family, they get sent to the cities to make money for mm -hmm. the family. Mm -hmm. They do not stay and toil on the farm. Right. And people of that specific age in their 20s, right. they're not on the farm. No. It's no. old people and children that you find in the rural sure. areas. So not only the age group, but also an attractive young woman would not be 
you know, in that kind of setup. And if she's wearing makeup and stuff like that, there's no way she's wearing those rural clothes. No, 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 no. There's like a Nobody wardrobe department right, that's been putting dirt on it for her right. and making her wear it. You know, it's, sure. it's very disingenuous. So anyway, the reason, no, no worries. The reason I brought this up is I was getting a lot of patrons that were asking me about the legitimacy of these because they really enjoyed watching them. This is not to discredit the kind of content. It's beautiful no, content. No, it's great. It's absolutely I love gorgeous. it. I love well it. Shot. And this, you know, the thing is there is beautiful countryside in China. Of course, we've seen you it. Know? There are beautiful traditions. There's amazing food. Right. So all of this stuff is theoretically legit. Mm. But if you were to see it in real life, it'd be completely different. We actually have a story, which, sure. by the way, if you look at what's up on the screen now, right. that's tofu. Mm -hmm. And uh, can I go into the story? Go for it. Okay. This is something that happened to us in real life. In fact, I'm going to look at the camera there. This is something that happened to us in real life, and it's kind of important that you'll hear about this. Now, there's this place, Jian Shui, where they've got these beautiful, like, old wells. Mm -hmm. Now, this is supposed to be this pure, beautiful, pure water, and these wells are hundreds of years old. And in the show, A Bite of China, which was put out on TV, which is, I think that was a... Was that's, that? that's the clip they that's showed. That's the clip, yeah. okay. And they show the preparation of this tofu using this beautiful, pristine water. Mm -hmm. That was um, the whole point. That, that's the whole point, yeah. is the water is special. Right. And they make this tofu. And uh, after that show, they got so popular that, you know, people were ordering this tofu online. Yeah, Taobao. Through Taobao. Right? Yeah. And it just became a huge industry. The problem is... Yes, it's beautifully shot. Yes, it looks amazing. Yes, the tofu itself was delicious. We ate it ourselves. Yeah. But when we went there and we went to the well that's being used, remember, we started to see all those like people that had actual deformities everywhere. Yeah, like missing hair, yeah. welts all over their skin, boils. Yeah, yeah. And a guy who saw us with cameras like pulled us aside and was like, hey, come follow, follow us. It's kind of in our Conquering Southern China yeah, documentary. Yeah. But we didn't really talk about it because... We, you know, we're always very much on, have to stand on this line where yeah. if we go over that line, sure. it's going to cause a lot of trouble for us in China. He took us and showed us that basically just above the mm. well, there's like drained, drainage ditches mm -hmm. full of garbage. Right. All the sewage runoff from all the houses in the area run into the well. The well water is actually contaminated mm -hmm. and disgusting, and it's causing people to become ill because everybody drinks it in the in that. If you area. look at the well, it's impressive. Yeah, yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah. but you just look just next to the well, and you see Sewage. filth, yeah. filth like, and it's above the well, mm. so it obviously soaks in. Yeah. So because we started filming this, we actually ended up getting chased mm. by bosses of the local tofu um, like factories that were there. We call them the tofu mafia. Yeah, because they noticed us. So first of all. We had a guy come and threaten us. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. And then he went away to go and fetch all this, you know, sorry, <clears throat> fetch all this um, fabulously terrible fermented cronies, <laughs> yeah. these horrible guys. <laughs> um, and they actually basically started to come and give us trouble and we had to escape and we got mm -hmm. to our hotel and they didn't know which hotel they, that we were staying in, mm -hmm. but they were checking hotel to hotel to try and find out where foreigners were and we got out of there really quickly. Yeah, we left like immediately in the morning, yeah. right? So basically... Um, what this proves is it proves that these kind of shows are just a very big uh, theatrical production. Sure. You know, it's not like most of it is just not true. Sure. You know? Now, when I was going and doing my research for all this kind of stuff, yeah. I, um, I was going through and I was very impressed when I go to like Social Blade and stuff, how quickly some of these channels have grown. And I suspected, I suspected kind of bots, paid bots and stuff, uh, because they're, that's rampant all sure. over YouTube, right? But... When I actually saw the amount of comments that were coming in, a lot of them were in Chinese, of course. But like I said, when I go back to people that were sending me messages on Patreon and stuff, yeah. they were like fascinated and like enraptured by these videos, right? Yeah. And I told them, by all means, be fascinated by these videos. They're gorgeous, right? Yes. But you have to understand, and to go back to this whole demographic thing, that in the Chinese countryside, if you are, if you've graduated high school, that's the bare minimum, right? If you've graduated high school, you don't live in that village anymore. No. And when we go to villages, there are no young people. There are none left, no, right? No, none. If you are decent looking, you've already found work in the cities, right? Especially for a woman. Yeah. And you're not going to stay at home and farm. There, yeah. I don't know any Chinese people that, by choice, stay on the farm at home, right? Yeah. So what is being portrayed is this massive fantasy that these hardworking, industrious, and it's always women, yeah. hardworking, industrious women are choosing to build their own little, you know, perfectly meticulous cabin out in the Chinese forest, mm -hmm. going out and harvesting all of these fresh greens that are growing in this beautiful jungle, right? Mm -hmm. 
getting the water out of the river, which terrifies me, by the way, (laughs) and then cooking everything on site or building a bamboo door and all this kind of stuff. And it's, it's beautiful, but I can't, I can't help but be a little bit shocked that uh, China's taken to YouTube so fervently yeah. and so hardcore because these channels are are dominating, absolutely yeah. dominating. Okay, yeah, I got to add to this. Okay, first of all, there's nothing wrong with this picture that they paint because, sure. like I said, this is an ideal image of China. Right. Right. Okay, this is what China they they would like China to look sure. like. Sure. This isn't what China looks no, no, no. like in real life. It absolutely isn't. But they are taking the real Chinese traditions and the real everything and, and making something out of it. Mm-hmm. But where I have my biggest problem is that they are using blocked social media sure. to promote this kind of stuff. Now, one but, narrative. Yeah, it's, it's one narrative. And you say there's explosive growth. Of course there is because they have an incentive to make it grow. So mm-hmm. then they will allow people to use VPNs to go and subscribe and they will mm-hmm. encourage that and they will have actual you know, members of the government that are paid to do it. Oh, yeah, I was okay. going to say, you wouldn't be able to use cameras like that unless you were, had people from the government yes. on your team. You're not allowed to go and film, no. because we've done our own documentaries. Right. You cannot do that kind of thing without, no. you know, permits and big red tape and stuff. Even Chinese people. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, and they're using very professional cameras and stuff. So it's like a proper, you know, state-run thing that's mm-hmm. going on here. So you have to always bear that in mind. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean you can't enjoy it. It doesn't mean that it's not beautifully shot and beautifully done. And as someone who works in, in media, I can really appreciate it. Sure. But... For me, what gets me is the fact that they are using Western blocked illegal social media to do it. And you cannot do the same in China. If you You go like if you're a Western company and you I mean, like America wants to push like how amazing American farms are, how beautiful like farming in America or something. You cannot then go in onto Chinese social media and go and put it out there without it getting blocked or some kind of crap happening. Sure. Yeah. And it's just so targeted. Right? Yeah, it's just so targeted. That, that's my problem is that if we go back to like Simon Yu, yeah. the guy that we mentioned in the beginning, if you guys just tuned in, Simon mm-hmm. Yu is a new Chinese YouTuber. Mm-hmm. He's got a very small following, right? Yeah. But his message to me mm-hmm. is so much more important for the social growth of China than yes. these kind of channels, which are just beautiful entertainment, yes. right? Nobody's going to walk out of watching these beautiful countryside farming shows and say, you know what? China's the way to go. This mm-hmm. is the country that we need to support. And I've learned so much about everything there. Yeah. Whereas you watch an actual commentator like Simon who lives in society, because these are not societal shows. No, no, this no, is no. not how society it's works. Fantasy. It's, it's fantasy. It's just fantasy. Yeah. If you look at someone like Simon Yu and someone like that's actually trying to speak their mind about how things work in China, yeah. they don't get an audience. And when no. they get too big, they're in trouble. Oh, dude. Sorry, I have to bring this up. This is very important again. Um, speaking of that whole fantasy of how, you know, the natural China, remember during Conquering Northern China. Now, Conquering Northern China, we shot this documentary. If you haven't seen it, you know, there's, yeah, behind us is this flag with all the writing and stuff on it. Those are all the people that we, you know, met along the way. We met this guy called Mr. Xu in Rongqing. <laughs> oh, right? Mr. Xu. Yeah, such an amazing guy. If you haven't Love seen the, the documentary, it's great. Anyway, now this is a shot over the bow of BBC. Okay, yeah. BBC made a thing called Wild China, which yeah. is a very beautiful documentary yeah. about... It's like, a bit dated now. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah, but it's all about like Chinese wildlife. And and they filmed a scene. Actually, they got Mr. Xu to help set up the scene. And he was telling us all about it. Now, in the scene, you've got these sort of farmers on the beach mm-hmm. digging in the sand and pulling out cockles. From, mm. You know, like this kind there of... It was sh- like the focus fish. of that shot. Yeah, and it's like the... The, the peasants, you know, <laughs> do this. You know, probably got David Attenborough. Yeah, you know, something like, like uh, that. They I think fish, it was. Maybe they fish for the cockles on the beach. Right. Anyway, Mr. Shu's like, no, no, no. We had to take the cockles that we farm in this, like, concrete pit over there. And we had to put them in the sand for that shot. So <laughs> we actually, BBC. Yeah, so they actually put the cockles in the sand and then filmed and then, like, hired a bunch of randos off the street to come and, like, pull them out of the sand while BBC filmed them. Do you remember when we were eating dinner and he told us that so nonchalantly? The yeah. thing that in, it first shocked me because yeah, yeah. BBC has a lot of integrity, at least, mm. you know, internationally. I think a lot of people look at BBC yeah. like an unbiased source, right? Sure. But, I mean, like, the fact that we <laughs> yeah. had gone and already shot one documentary and had not BSed anything. Everything yeah. was completely genuine. We might sure. have to cut things out, but sure. everything, interaction was not set up, no, no, right? No, no. 
So when we heard this, us two little guys, you know, yeah. that we're not setting things like this up. But yeah. the thing that impressed me the most was uh, Mr. Shu yeah. so nonchalantly being yeah. like, yeah, that's how we shoot things, right? Yeah. I've already done a documentary. He's all kind of yeah, like, yeah, he's like yeah, showing off. Yeah. We'll pay him like 10 RMB. We'll go uh, put the cockles out in the sand for you. Yeah, because we actually asked him like where that was because right. we were thinking about trying to like shoot a similar type thing. Right. Not to copy BBC, but sure. we wanted to go and interview the people that did that. Right. And uh, he was like, oh, no, they don't exist. Right. You know, right. we just hired some random people yeah. to <laughs> yeah. pick up. The <laughs> anyway, and I think yeah. a narrative yeah. in the uh, mm -hmm. BBC documentary was also that they that's one of their uh, main foods. Yeah. Right. They yeah. only eat this kind of stuff. And we go around. We had to change the whole shot because yeah. we had that impression as well. Sure. And he's like, no, we eat steam buns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah he makes, so we those, went on the makes those <laughs> massive steam buns. So and we stuff, went on yeah. steam bun yeah. runs with him instead. We changed yeah. everything because we're yeah. not we're not fake. Yeah, right? yeah. I thought that. Was uh, yeah. Anyway, so that was just basically to add on top of the the whole sort of fake beautiful scenery thing. I, sure. I thought that was really funny. It is. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, there, expect yeah. an explosion like this. Yeah. Um, and if you're interested in commentary about China from a Chinese perspective, we were just so impressed that we found someone. There's probably other people out there, yeah. right? <clears throat> yeah. But, you know, I don't want to make this a warning to anyone. Expect threats that we get, right? Yeah. It's it's not pleasant work, necessarily. No, absolutely not. But the thing is, the, the nice thing about someone like uh, Simon is he loves his country. Mm -hmm. But he's also realistic about what he likes and what he doesn't like. Sure. And that's, that's something that's almost never seen. Mm -mm in China because you're not allowed to say anything that's not 100%. I wish yet. we had this clip, but I'll, I'll mention it, okay? Right, right. So when people get paid, and this is another big thing, right? Mm -hmm. If we're gonna expand past this whole YouTube thing, yeah. what China, the Chinese government is doing is paying these countryside women to make things for Western media, soft yes, power for Western yes, media. Yeah. But internally, they're getting more English teachers and white people, specifically white people in China, mm -hmm. to make domestic propaganda. Right. So I'll go back to this. We don't have the oh, clip, that but guy. remember that guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he goes on this rant about how uh, the West is so unfair and China is amazing and he loves China, it's his home and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, whatever, typical Chinese propaganda. But mm. there's a scene right in the middle where he goes, sure, China has its problems. And I got excited. I was yeah. like, okay, finally China's actually gonna admit some of this stuff. It fades black. Yeah. And then it comes back and he's like, but I love it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So there are two brands of, of soft power media. Yeah. Yeah. One is for the domestic Chinese audience and, and they usually the use Western. foreigners, yeah. ironically. Yeah. I think they want Chinese people to think that Westerners think China is on the right path. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. You think that's the progress? Yeah, 100%. You know, it's just interesting. And uh, one of the main reasons for us to do this podcast is just to shed light on all of this stuff and show people exactly what's going on and let them judge themselves. Sure, I yeah. mean, it's create a fair yeah. playing field, right? Absolutely. Anyway, it's probably time to move on to our next segment. What do you reckon? Sure. So, next we have... Guan Shi Corner. Okay, so we're gonna have to switch over to DM. He's gonna read us the question, the relationship question. Let's go. All right, what's, what's up, guys? guys? So, loyal, loyal patron here from Leeds, UK. Appreciate your content and everything you guys do on Patreon and YouTube is well worth the support I give. I've been speaking to a Chinese girl through a dating service. She's from Jilin province. She sent me multiple photos and she's very beautiful but refuses to meet in person or send me her WeChat. She says she doesn't use WeChat. I've sent her a laptop which she says got stopped in customs and I've sent, so I sent her money instead. We've been in contact for a year through the email service and translator on the site but I'm concerned because of the refusal to contact through WeChat, phone, and a refusal to meet in person. I volunteered to fly to, F to Jilin myself. Any advice would be appreciated. So he's afraid he's getting catfished. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, Winston, would you like to begin this one? Sure. This guy actually contacted both of us. Yeah. Um, and first, let's talk about the, the whole laptop thing, obviously. You're going to skip to that part. Okay, okay just... Laptop gets sent, she mm. receives it, says she doesn't receive it, so mm -hmm. now she has a laptop, send me money instead, now she has money as That's well. That's quite obvious, right? Yeah, okay. Not using WeChat is a load of rubbish. That was my first red flag. Yeah. Let me explain why. Every single person in China uses WeChat. Mm -hmm. It is such an integral part of life these days. And when I say every single person, you can see the women that sweep the streets and carry the sort of like rubbish away and stuff, they have phones with WeChat on. Everyone uses it to pay for everything these days. So it's number one, it's nobody carries money around anymore. Really, it's cashless. such a, it's cashless society. You need WeChat to pay for things. People do not make phone calls anymore, you know, or send text messages. They receive everything through WeChat, send WeChat voice messages, um, you know, receive 
texts everything through WeChat. They pay for their bills through WeChat. You can pay your gas, your electricity. You can top up your phone airtime. You can do everything through WeChat. It's the one all-powerful piece of software, and it's the one tool you absolutely need to survive in the one China. tool to rule them all yeah absolutely so when we were reading through this um first off i want to say this is one of so many different messages we get from people like this yeah. that are very concerned that they're going through dating says we've already made a massive disclaimer a warning to people mm. that you shouldn't be using asian specific dating sites like sure. things like eHarmony and stuff like that are fairly well vetted but when you're using like Asian friend finder, like my China love, there's lists of them, yeah. right? My Lotus porcelain doll.com. Right. <laughs> out of the, I'm going to say 10, mm. out of the 10 cases we've looked at, right? Yeah. I've only been able, I've only been stumped by one because I can't find like ultimate proof. Yeah. But in this case, and thank you to this guy, number one, for saying the question and supporting us. But number two, thank you for allowing us to use your case because when we were diving into this, what when he sent me the photos right yeah reverse image check first off straight off the bat she's on a hundred other sites absolutely different profiles turns out this girl she's probably not even chinese it looked like stock photos from korea right, right. which was very interesting so immediately that was uh, a concern when he sent me photos to prove that it was her yeah like like timestamp stuff hey whatever his name was right yeah. um they didn't look anything like her yeah right yeah. And it exactly. was it was like my first warning flag. And then he's like kind of disappointed. So he's sending money, he's sending gifts, and he's going out of his way and he's getting tricked, right? That's so right. So we see so many cases like this. And like I said, only one we haven't been able to solve. But a lot of people contact us about this kind of stuff. And um, it's very, very sad, but it's also very avoidable. Yeah. Um, I would give some, the Guan Chi Corners about advice, right? Yeah. If you're in a situation like this, where you are uh, talking to somebody through one of these sites, if they say, like Winston said, they don't have WeChat, that's bullshit, number one. Absolutely, 100%. Number, number two, you shouldn't be going through a translation service because if that person can't communicate to, to you in your language, it gets kind of weird when you meet up. Oh, man, look, I have a bunch. By the way, I'm not being rude looking at my phone. Okay. I'm trying to find, me. No, I'm trying to find something you. very specific. No, yeah, thank you. appreciate it. Um, I will take that. I'm trying to find something very specific to this topic. But... Yeah. Um, uh, I've, I know a lot of subscribers and I've met couples where, you know, and we've been there right in the beginning too, sure. where you cannot speak the same language. Right. And there's With nothing more infuriating. Right? Yeah, it's like, stuff. it's terrible. Like, you know, that's not a good way to have a relationship. It's... I don't want to sound judgy, but I don't believe in the whole, like, I can look into your eyes and you're my soulmate. Yeah, the bullshit. language of love kind of nonsense. Right. Because at the end of the day, there's such massive cultural gaps and if you can't even communicate to talk about those things you're both living in a fantasy world and then then the nightmare begins yeah, right yeah, yeah. um anyway so that was my second red flag my third red flag is that if you have to pay to send emails to someone mm -hmm. like i understand paying for a dating website but you should be able to exchange personal contacts after that right right so this guy's basically in some of the other messages he was saying that he wasn't allowed to contact her outside of that kind of email Found it. sorry right. okay, okay. Go ahead. <clears throat> Um, I don't know if we can get, can you put it on the probably wide? Go wide. Uh, you probably go. Yeah, yeah we're good. Close shot, maybe. Get it closer in there. Can you, can you see that? That's my wife. Right. Chloe Yu. Okay. Oh, I didn't you know can't that was her see. Name. Okay, this is a picture of my wife. And I get this all the time. This is the, well, this is the third time someone has sent me, um, you know, from Tinder or mm. one of these things. It's a picture of my wife that I put up on the internet at some point. So they've copied it. Mm -hmm. Now, her name is Chloe Yu. She works at Learn LA and studied at UCLA. Mm -hmm. This is her little profile. That's my wife, okay? <laughs> there's another one where she's called Rita, you know, mm -hmm. and it's got all her details on Tinder. Sure. And there's, so basically what's happening is there are people that are going out and finding uh, pictures of attractive Asian women right. and just putting them out there with random names and random profiles and people are falling for it. The clever ones will do what they did because your mm -hmm. wife is not on stock, like stock yeah, yeah, picture yeah. websites, but a lot of them are just stock pictures. And a little advice, just yeah. literally go on google.com and type in reverse image search. Yes. Put those pictures in there and you'll see immediately. That's the best way because, you know, obviously my wife doesn't even have a, a Tinder profile. Mm -hmm. And what they've done is they've gone and found like what they thought was someone's random you, uh, Facebook page or mm -hmm. something because they probably got it off of her Facebook or something mm. um, downloaded her profile picture and used it and that right. way they don't think they're going to get caught out right yeah. second piece of advice is mm. don't send gifts do not send gifts if you have not met this person in no. real life because no. why don't you tell why don't you tell everyone out there what happened to that poor dude from the Netherlands or German Germany was it Germany Where the guy who ended in up airport, in the airport yeah. yeah well 
It's not only that, there have been a number of... Okay, we'll use him as an example. Okay, but anyway, so he's been having this long-term relationship online with, through one of these dating sites. And these dating sites often charge you every time you send a message That's to That's what this guy's people. gone yeah, through. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, because you, you, you're paying for translation yeah. fees and stuff. Yeah. So he's been spending all this money. Eventually, he wants to meet her, and he flies all the way to the airport, he's supposed mm -hmm. to meet her, and I think they arranged to meet and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he just ended up in the airport with a sign, and he, mm -hmm. you know... She never came, and he had to sleep there. And it's like five days yeah, or something. Like, and people were giving him food. And yeah, it's stuff. just like, and that's uh, not the first time that's happened. It's very easy to delude yourself mm -hmm. if you are in an online relationship mm -hmm. with someone you've never met. You know, it starts to feel real. Yeah, and you start to, even when all the red flags are there, and people are like, "No, remember that guy we tried to help." And we showed him that the picture of the girl that he was talking about was on like ten different websites. Yes. This was years ago. He wouldn't believe us. He actually started swearing at us and he started to like, you know, insult us because we were just telling him the truth. Most of the people that yeah. we've talked to have been very, very good. They've been very nice. They've been very pleasant. Yeah. They've been like, thank you so much. You literally saved me thousands of dollars yeah. in the future, right? Thousands of $5 bills in the future. Um, yeah. I'm yeah, going to yeah. keep that now. I'm keeping it, yeah. Um, but yeah, there was one guy that was super belligerent. And I understand, and you were actually better at dealing with this than I was, because I was starting to get pissed off. I was yeah. like, dude, shut the hell up. Like, yeah. we just spent a week. Remember how long we spent? Yeah, we sent WeChat messages yeah. to that. We found the number, and yeah. it was some guy. It was some guy, and yeah. he was like, F off. This is, she's real, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, why did you go out of your way to try to ask us for help? When we prove it wrong, then you get mad at us. It was projecting. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It was, it was pretty infuriating, but I get why you'd be so upset. Yeah. Right? Imagine, you, wasn't it a couple of years he was yeah, talking yeah, to this absolutely. woman? Yeah, absolutely. That's why. Years and thousands of dollars down the drain. Yeah. So That sucks. I mean, we were going to have to wrap this up. I mean, what I want to say is to this guy is I feel really sorry mm -hmm. that this has happened to you, but you have to be very careful. Think of it as any other kind of online scam. Sure. Okay, they're going to tell you what you want to know. And the only way to ensure that you're not scammed by these kind of people is, first of all, make sure you can speak to them live online. Sure. Because get their WeChat. Dude, and also a lot of people I've met who've actually been successful in meeting these people, they're so shocked at the difference in appearance because of the doctored, photoshopped kind right. of pictures. So make sure you see them online using Skype. Because mm. Skype is one of those things where they can't use the doctored software and stuff. And That's weird true. Things. I think WeChat video calls. That's okay probably too. okay yeah. too. See them online, talk to them online. Make sure you're speaking to that person, mm. get to know them, and then kind of think about going to visit them, but don't just give them money and stuff. Because nine times out of ten, it's not real. No, no, you know? no. Cool. Time for our... I will say, uh, yes, can, please, I, can I jump in here? Yeah. yeah. Um, at, at risk of giving the internet even more things to dox me on, but uh, my girlfriend and I have been long distance for quite a while, mm -hmm. but we've, we've met in person and like called on the phone and stuff, so sure. that's different in that regard, but I just want to say it can work. We, sure. We, we're very happily together. Of course. So It's mostly just uh, some advice for, for the people that have been bitten or are on the path to being bitten. Also, right? don't forget that like medieval time relationships do not coincide with modern day relationships. Yeah, that's true. The whole thing was arranged. <laughs> <laughs> I gave a goat as a dowry, so. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. So let's move on to our next section, shall we? Sure. Worldview. Okay, so for world view, we're going to go back to our little... Um... It's when we talk about countries that aren't China, right? Oops, yeah, yeah. did I just say that? Ooh, <laughs> today. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to go back to our little pictures that we had on earlier. Mm -hmm. um, and there's been something that's very, very interesting that's happening in the news. So let's take a look. Um, You're right. Ooh, what's this? They look very happy. Yeah, you very might gay. say, yeah, <laughs> happy and gay. You yeah, you did. Damn it. <laughs> so what happened? Uh, Taiwan has legalized gay marriage. Yes, it's going to be signed soon, right? Yeah. Tsai um, Ing-wen, the president. Yeah, and this is a big thing. This is a big thing for, um, well, Asia in general, really. Yeah. First country in Asia, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, Taiwan has always been very sort of open mm. and uh, liberal in a lot of ways, mm. you know, um, and that's just the way it is. Mm. But it's a, it's a huge step forward because, sure. you know, in mainland China, you can't, be gay. Not only that, but just look at other Asian countries, yeah. right? That's it's way a ways off, right? Yeah, yeah. Taiwan is the first one, but yeah, uh, mainland China. No, they, they you, you can't be openly gay because I, yeah. I have to. I have to like. I hate to go back to hypocrisy, but like right. China, I hate to say this is probably the least conservative, most conservative country you can talk about. Yeah. There is so much rampant prostitution and cheating and things like this and mm. the, the things people talk about and exchange yeah, yeah, sure, and stuff. Sure, sure. But 
on paper they cannot be like that, right? So, for instance, you can't have a gay TV presenter. No. Or a gay, gay actor. There is a, they banned a bunch of gay anime. Yeah. Um, you can't, can't have earrings because that's gay, right? Yeah. It's gone so far. You were talking to me earlier, tell me about some of these gay camps that they have in China. Yeah, they've got gay conversion. What do they do? What do they like do? Like shock therapy and stuff. Oh, okay. And don't they have stuff's... those like boot camps too? Yeah, I mean that this stuff still exists because right. don't forget family, um, family units are so important in China. Mm. Uh, so you have to get married. You have to have a child. So if your son is gay, it messes that all up. And don't forget the one-child policy exacerbates that. Right. Okay. Even though it's a two-child policy now, it we're talking now, a, we're right. talking about people that were Live, born doing that. Now, yeah. yeah. Um, so you get a lot of situations where gay men do get married and have children. They do. Yeah. But that's just kind of like a, a job that they have to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? My father-in-law has yeah. his coworker. Yeah. The gayest man you've ever seen. He's actually hilarious and it's fun to hang out yeah, with. Yeah. But he's married with children, but he yeah. is so gay. And then he ended up getting caught with another guy, oh, ended no. up getting divorced. But you're absolutely correct. It yeah. does happen. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I know a bunch, like my first girlfriend in China actually had a bunch of gay friends. Mm -hmm. That was her thing. She's, you know, into that whole scene because she was an artist mm. and fantastic guys to hang around with. But they all had to pretend that they weren't. So, you know, um, you'd have a guy and he's a very butch big guy and he... Um, had to, like I said, pretend to be married. He did have a wife, but like back in the hometown or whatever. And he had all these, they called them Xiao Bai Lian. Mm. Xiao Bai Lian means a little white face. Those are the, the, the feminine sort of um, gay guys. He had a whole bunch of them following him around everywhere. And it was just kind of like interesting. It was, yeah, it's interesting how, how in plain sight it had to be hidden. So sure. there'd be things like, like we'd, all, we'd all go out drinking together and he'd have his gay partner with him, right. but his gay partner would have to pretend to be like a business associate or something and sit there and they'd have to pretend like they weren't together. But right. you know, it, it's just, that's just Chinese society. For sure. My, my openly gay Chinese friend in China wants to leave China so bad because of how much crap he's had to deal with. Yeah. And uh, he actually, he had an interesting quote. He said, what happened in Taiwan mm -hmm. is both uplifting and heartbreaking because he knows it's not going to happen in mainland China. Right. right. So it's kind of like all these people in, in China are like, uh, I can't really celebrate. But they're trying. Yes. And how are they trying? Well, let's look at the next picture. Let's go back to the, our pictures. and Okay. Why don't you read this off? Okay. Um, it says, well, let's look at the original post. Sure. The original post down there says, People's Daily China. And People's Daily China, by the way, is a state-run newspaper. It says, local lawmakers in hashtag Taiwan China have... <laughs> Legalized same-sex marriage in a first for Asia, according to local media reports. And maybe you can read the sure. rebuttal. So this is from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, ROC Taiwan. Now, before you guys get confused, like I said, People's Daily China is state-run CCP Twitter and CCP newspaper, right? Yes. So the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Taiwan, who considers itself an independent country, replied, Wrong! <laughs> the bill was passed by our national parliament and will be signed by the president soon. Democratic hashtag Taiwan is a country in itself and has nothing to do with authoritarian hashtag China. At PD China is a commie brainwasher and it sucks. <laughs> it's not very professional if that really is a Ministry of Foreign Affairs. To be fair, though, <laughs> imagine this massive victory gets yeah. claimed by this juggernaut of a nation. I'm, to be fair, we said this earlier before yeah, the podcast. Yeah. How many people actually know about Taiwan? Our audience? Probably. But yeah. in general, a lot of people get Thailand and Taiwan confused. Sure. For those of you who are, I'm pretty sure everyone who's watching is not really like that. But those of you who are confused, Thailand is where the lady boys are, where you go to those beautiful beaches, you know, white beaches. You go there for an amazing holiday, drink a lot of cheap alcohol, right. have a Jungles, great time. Yeah. Um, that's Thailand. You know, they've got a king. Yeah. Um, all that kind of stuff. It's a monarchy. Yeah. Taiwan is an island off of mainland China, which, you know, claims its own sovereignty. Mm. And the Republic China, of China. Yeah, the Republic of China, and China claims it. So the island of Taiwan, it's basically the result of a civil war, yeah. and they never finished it. Mm -hmm. So you, know, you got the nationalists moved there and the communists stayed in mainland China. And most people yeah. would have no sympathy for Taiwan if they didn't turn into a powerhouse democracy full of freedom, freedom of press, very transparent legal love system, love industry. All that kind of stuff, health, health yeah. care, yeah. you know. So, so anyway, why why is this such a hubbub? Why why is Taiwan going ape shit about this? Well, they they don't like the fact that this victory is trying to be claimed by uh, mainland China because mainland China would never have taken that step. Right, and the the punctuation that you read earlier is very important. Local yeah. lawmakers in Taiwan, China. So they basically instead of saying that. Uh, a government, a president, mm -hmm. local lawmakers in yes. our province. So yeah. 
if you think about it, there's so much hypocrisy there. But for the average viewer, they're yeah. going to be like, oh, I didn't know. Oh, Taiwan's in China, right? Yeah, and yeah. they even write Republic of China up there. Yeah, so yeah. they're, you know, they probably don't understand. Yeah. But can you, can I, I'll ask you a question, a hypothetical question. Okay, sure. Let's say Gansu province, just pick yeah. a random one. Mm -hmm. Let's say the local lawmakers voted that gay marriage was legalized. Can that happen? No. So how does that make sense? It doesn't make sense. It just makes sense from a propaganda point of view, right. soft power point of view. It's a very, yeah. very sloppy Let's, propaganda. It is. Let's go to the next picture, actually. The next picture um, says, <laughs> well, this is the Global Times. Okay, this is the Chinese communist. Tell them well, what they did to us. In they, they did these. Okay. I, I can't <laughs> We're going to regroup here. The Global Times is an official newspaper. The Chinese. English. Yeah, an official Chinese government newspaper, mm. right? So this is basically, uh, I don't know, if America, does America have an equivalent? Like Wall Street Journal or something? But okay, that's not whatever. really a government, but that's like an official... We don't have government newspaper. Yeah, you don't yeah. have, okay. But, you know, they, they have to be responsible with what they put out there. Sure. Because, you know, they have to you represent... You can't be ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This newspaper <laughs> looks like a bunch of college kids who are drunk are running it. It works. Yeah, it's it's they they write horrible things about you know people. They derogatory. You know you what know? it is. What you know when you go to the supermarket, right? Yeah, yeah. And they have like the legitimate magazines, legitimate newspapers, New York Times, whatever, right? Then you have those tabloids that are like, I was raped by an alien and I gave birth to a cabbage or something. Yeah, yeah. That's, imagine if it was like that, but with like a CCP rhetoric. Yeah, that's what it imagine is. it was that, but it was like, this is an official White House press release. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And that's what the Global Times is. They are the ones that made that hit piece against me right. saying I'm a, a whatever, a, a drunken, you know, piece of crap because I made that video. Right. Oh, and they lied. They completely yeah. lied. About everything what you that said. was everything that was in there was just a bunch of nonsense. Right. And it was also very xenophobic. Like remember, it was <sighs> super like, racist. It was written by a reporter say, who, right? yeah, it was very very racist. She was like, I even studied in England. And I didn't dare to date a British. They didn't, you know, right? All like, this nonsense. Whoa, we were like, what? We were even shocked. <laughs> yeah. So the Global Times, this is the official mouthpiece of Communist China says. Where do queers in China hang out? And this came out right after they yeah. took uh, responsibility yes. for the whole Taiwan gay marriage thing. So what they thought they would do to, to exacerbate this, like yeah, yeah. we made this happen, right? Yeah, yeah. Us, CCP, are so open-minded. They use this headline. For yeah. God, for Mao's sake, <laughs> what in Mao's name are you doing? Yeah. Do you have any proofreaders? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a slur, by the way, for Chinese people. You don't go and call um, someone who's gay a it's queer. It's kind of like the N-word, right? Like, I guess... Yeah. Like gay people could maybe jokingly refer to themselves as that, yeah. right? I've heard people say that before, but you don't make a newspaper article called "Where Do the Queers in China Hang Out?" Because <laughs> no, no, you you're immediately not unless you want to make me chuckle because <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Well, they're kind of <laughs> taking it back for themselves, aren't they? Sure. Because there's like all those things where somebody identifies as gender queer or what have you. Right. But I think maybe that level of um, uh, I'm not saying whether it's right or wrong, but DM. No, I want to ask you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This headline, I'm not saying, oh, you can't do this because it's offending me. It's offending everybody. But how do you, can you understand the thought process behind supposedly a not gay person that wrote this headline or an article? How did they come up with something like this? Because uh, you're using a Western lens. Right? Yeah, honestly, it, it seems to me like maybe they've seen that you that word used a lot in Western maybe. Uh, yeah. things. But that that level of like openness hasn't reached their country yet. So it sure. seemed a little off. I, I right. don't know. Uh, that's yeah. just my take. Okay, and, cool. Anyway, um, let's go to the next picture because uh, in the next picture, uh, I think this is, this is a little joke. Yeah? Oh, this is a great little okay, joke. Okay, um, let's, let's read it out. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be, uh, I'll be uh, Z, ZGR. Okay, all right. So this is my favorite setup is to do this to a Chinese person that bothers me. Okay. okay. Hey, I heard China just legalized same-sex marriage. No, we didn't. But Taiwan just legalized same-sex marriage. Taiwan's not, uh, yes, China is, uh. <laughs> this is just a kind of a funny meme. This is being passed around through all the little expat circles sure. at the moment. Sure, Because it is funny, and it actually, this joke does shine a light on the current mm. situation. Because China will claim anything that Taiwan does as mm. being part of China because that's the rhetoric. However, if Taiwan does something like this that China is actually completely against, the majority of Chinese people will not claim it. Sure. That's when they will be like, wait, hang on. No, Taiwan is you, not. Because you can't even use the T word, usually, no, no. right? Unless you say it's a part of China. There's, there's a little trick that we've been doing, by yeah. the way. If <laughs> oh, you're going to dox this trick? <laughs> yeah, i got to dox that trick. If you watch a lot of our videos lately... Um, 
we always include a little clip that we shot in Hong Kong. Because, mm-hmm. you know, Hong Kong's still, for all intents and purposes, uh, a free country. You've yeah, got, it's, well, it's, it's not so much now. But yes, I mean, it is part of China. It yeah. was handed back. It is legitimately does belong to China. SAR. We, yeah, yeah. But it is a special autonomous region. Um, and they still have laws in place that allow freedom of speech. So when you go into Hong Kong, you will see um, protest signs where they'll be like talking about the umbrella movement. You'll have uh, signs that are for the Falun Gong. There'll be signs that are against the Falun mm. Gong. And it's allowed because it's got that kind of legal sure. framework. So they, they've got something called the shopping protests. Mm. Um, and what happens is in the big shopping areas where all the mainlanders come to shop, um, people put up Taiwan flags and they put up signs saying, you know, like Taiwan is independent and stuff because they're allowed to do that. Mm. And it's kind of like another form of soft power mm. for all the visiting shoppers. Right. So they walk in, they're like, oh my God, what's Because the majority this? of people there are Chinese mainlanders. Yeah, at the yeah. moment shopping yeah. there, yeah, on any given day. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so we filmed a bit of that. And we always try to sneak in a little clip of that into our videos. Why do we do that? Well, we do that because this might have instigated the whole thing where they can't talk about our videos or show our videos anymore. Yeah. Because now that our videos are not, I mean, they'll have negative things against the Chinese government or something, but they're not spicy enough yet. But when you show a Taiwanese flag, umbrella protest, all these kind of really thing, like sensitive things they're trying to shut down, then they can't use it. No, they can't. They post can't. It. So people can't copy our videos and put them onto the Chinese media and slag us off anymore because we sprinkle on that. Yeah, it? because we sprinkle that in randomly, and if they're caught uploading that, they're the one, they're the ones who'll get into trouble. Right. Do you remember a few mm. years ago when we used to see this kind of stuff? Yeah. We didn't used to see the Taiwanese flag thing in Hong Kong, and no. the reason being is that recently Hong Kong's so pissed off that they're losing all their freedom. Yeah. They're getting so pissed off that now. Mm-hmm. Now they're actually using Taiwan as an example for what we should have been. Yeah, what yeah. they're what we're jealous of now. Yeah, yeah that's people are fine. fleeing. Actually, a Hong Kong guy. Yeah, he just got uh, extradited or not extradited. He just got uh, uh, what's it called um, when you uh, get to go to another country? Refugee. Refugee status. Oh, okay. In Germany. Oh, really? A Hong Kong guy because he got shut down in Hong Kong for protests, which is very interesting. This is different. This yeah, is new yeah. stuff. And I wanted to quickly say when we were doing that, like last month, a couple months ago going through there is the first time I felt nervous to be in that area because the guys in the anti Falun Gong thing, yeah. they had all these like plain clothes guys and they were like video taping yeah, they us were because we were filming the signs and right. then they, they came out with all these Send guys. Back to yeah. Beijing, yeah. you know, so, anyway. It is what it is. Let's not get too tinfoil hat about it. It's probably, yeah, it, probably... was, it was a little nervous. So that's nervous. the world view, view thing. Yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty interesting. Taiwan has legalized gay marriage. It's a huge step forward in Asia. And China did not do it. No. Okay, let's move on to our final thingy. Questions! First time, we have Super Chats. I'm super excited, Winston. Are you super pumped? I am super, it's super excited because DM chat. gets to read us the most interesting questions and we get to answer them. Sure, we'll do as many as we can. Yep, so All let's right, let's do this. So, um, several of these aren't really questions, but they're just... No stages. worries, you can read them off. Cool. You know? Yeah. So, we've got... Ooh, let me scroll properly here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Dong Hua Reviews says... Just wanted to say thank you for always putting out such informative videos across all four channels. Either uh, either of you guys ever check out Chinese animation? Well, um, Donghua Reviews, you sound like an anime type channel, right? Mm-hmm. Thank you very much, by the way. Appreciate yeah. it. Um, we have seen Chinese animation. Most of it is not great. It's awful. Um, and you have that new Karl Marx uh, anime that came <laughs> no, out. No, it's, it's terrible. I'm not going to lie here. Chinese animation has a long way to go. But, but I have seen some very talented... Uh, animation where they they basically they just copy Japanese animation. Sure, uh, I've seen a bunch of that, and sure. also they take the mangas and they redraw them. Basically, I'm like, sure there's like homegrown mm. animators that are like really talented. Yeah, but the stuff on TV. Oh anyway, yeah, the stuff like, that makes it to media. It's like yeah. three frames a second, it's and it's flash, and it's just so <laughs> copied and pasted. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, Xiang Yang. Ugh. You know. Mm. Okay. Everybody and their mother has also been saying that this whole thing is pre-recorded. And the this only, is that's a meme. Only now we're live right no, now. No, they they always do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a meme. Yeah. Uh, so next we've got Ruth Power said, "Love the show and happy Vivi likes her necklace." Oh, thank you very much. Ruth is actually a jewelry designer okay. from Ireland, and she made Vivi a necklace, and it's very beautiful. I really, really appreciate that, Ruth. Oh man, I was going to pull out that five dollars. What? <sighs> Ask you to not put her link. No, I'm just joking. No, what, what's her business name? Uh, I can't remember. Can't remember. Okay. Well, but no, you. I pre- appreciate that, Ruth. That's that's fantastic. We would have given you a link. Uh, well, he would have given you a link, and I would have given him five dollars. 
I'm not shilling for anyone. No, I'm just no. saying thank you for the necklace. Anyway, yeah, fantastic. So <laughs> next, please. All right. Next, we got uh, Rupert. It says, hello from England. When will you two travel to Thailand? Conquering Thailand on Vimeo, please. Okay. We've been to Thailand multiple times. Yeah. Um, won't get into that, but we will go back. We absolutely go back. I'd love to do Thailand. You know, the thing is, a full documentary like Conquering Thailand, I don't think is a good idea because it's it's been open for so long. The reason why conquering southern China and conquering northern China are special is because we got to actually see and show the world things that have never been seen. Before. And that's why we're going to places like Russia and India, yeah, yeah. because most people don't go there. Yeah, we want to go to the places that people don't normally see. Thailand is a tourist destination. You will see Thailand on YouTube for us, though. Oh, we'll yeah. We'll definitely go there. No, we'll do it like the same as what we did with Vietnam. Right. And we're still doing with Vietnam yeah. and Taiwan and stuff. Is we go there and we film, film episodes there and talk about things there. So you'll see Thailand. It's going to be fantastic. And we do extended trips. So. I, I love love thailand yeah. the, just riding there on motorcycles the weather is incredible you know the just the party vibe is great not a there. huge thai food fan no i mean you, lemongrass could take a hike but the best thing about Throw thailand up. is you get lots of good western food you there. Do? You yeah do. dude no, thai right. co like coconut curry and stuff thai iced Bro. tea you guys are tripping right now listen no, to me no. have you been to thailand yet no I've there you go yes i think your taste great okay yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i think we're just, gonna get so much hate do, do, <laughs> Delete the lemongrass and I morning. just hate lemongrass. Everything yeah. else tastes great. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Cool. Go All right. Next up, uh, Unibear just wanted to give us two dollars, so that's <laughs> thanks, man. Chill. That's Super so awesome. nice. Uh, Edward Berry says, "How do you guys feel about the OnePlus Seven Pro smartphone? China's best Android now, right? There, uh, are they going to take Huawei's place in the Western market now that Huawei is banned in the U.S. and will it spy on us? Do you no. think?" Uh, I've actually been to the OnePlus headquarters. Mm. I know people that work at mm. OnePlus. I actually went in there to make a video. Mm. But um, at the last minute, it happened to be just at the same time when Unbox Therapy and Linus Tech Tips and all those guys were in town mm. um, to do all their things about the China market. And because they had just received these very high profile YouTubers in there, um, something went wrong where they had to get some extra permission from someone so it just didn't happen gotcha you know what i mean yeah but i've always been very impressed with the one plus uh the, the the one plus you know products but you also have to understand yeah okay it's mainly foreigners yeah it's no absolutely it's a foreign i was company. gonna bring a beard oh yeah, he was yeah. he loves his one plus i i really didn't like the phone to okay. be honest. wasn't a huge fan it's cheap though yeah no i i would say that it's it's a fantastically put together phone maybe some of the software is not great on it you know um but it is kind of like a blank slate yeah so like yeah. i'm i can recommend one sure place. sure and having and actually knowing people there and having been there and seen how it all runs and stuff i'd say it's pretty pretty legit yeah i doubt it spies on you i mean huawei has government ties one mm -hmm. plus seven probably doesn't i'm not gonna speculate maybe yeah yeah. Anyway, cool. What's next? <laughs> All right. Sarah Keller gave $10. Very generous. Thank wow. you. She says, keep doing what you guys do. Come to Canada sometime. There's a big Chinese influence on the West Coast. Actually, we are planning to go there very soon. Yes, we are. Uh, we're going to do Vancouver and probably Toronto. Correct. I actually mm -hmm. filmed a episode in Toronto over the winter break mm -hmm. um, in the Chinatown. So I'll put that up at some point. Thank you for the invite. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be there. All right. So John Stellick says, I know a guy that's bummed out. He works here in the USA, but his visa is going to expire soon. He can, can, can continue to work for the same company, but he has to go back to Beijing. That sucks. That really sucks. Oh, yeah. No, that sucks a lot. I don't know any recommend. Is, that, is he asking for help? Because I don't know what to say. No, it's just a statement. Okay. <laughs> well, I feel bad for your friend. That really sucks. Yeah, look, no, the thing is, when there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. If there's anything that told me that, like if your friend really doesn't want to go back to Beijing, if he really wants to continue to stay in the U.S., he will make a plan. Mm. Get married. Get a visa. Whoa. <laughs> FBI. <laughs> FBI, open up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, what's next? Uh, Cesario JPN asked, did you guys ever get your Taiwan beer sponsorship? We didn't, nope. unfortunately. I'm still waiting on them for that because we did get, this is the best international plug they've ever gotten. I, it's still my favorite beer. I don't understand that. No, it's, but I like it. It's more about the. It's that, about like that 18, us hanging out. Yeah, right? it's that eighteen day one. Yeah, it's that's probably, super good. It's probably about the experiences that I tie to it. So, like, if I ever drink that, you can't find that eighteen. No, 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 no. Day beer. It's only outside. made it every yeah, so, eighteen yeah. days. Yeah. Um, or, it's only good for eighteen days. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that would suck. <laughs> anyway, the thing is, it's so, so good. It's just when I taste it, you know, it's got that. Deep. 
that association. Thing. Do you remember when we were in Taiwan and we yeah. saw the sorry, I'm yeah. fine. Um, yeah. We saw the the advertisement. We weren't planning on drinking. We were gonna no. film something. That yeah. was where that episode came from, by yeah. the way. Yeah. And we saw this massive poster, and it was like the most beautiful advertisement I've ever oh, seen. And yeah, we looked yeah. over the fridge, and we we're like, we gotta drink some freaking beer, dude. And you know what? You know what the advertising was? It was a submarine <laughs> shooting torpedoes, yeah. and the torpedoes were beer. We're beer. <laughs> We were yeah. like, we need that torpedo to yeah. go down. <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. So what's Thank next? Yeah. All right. Um, next, uh, half a supremacy. Hey, guys. Says, what's, what's happening? <laughs> Will you do a meetup in Texas? Uh, yes. Yeah. Why not? Actually, um, there's there's a YouTuber that I watch who fixes Corvettes. Mm. And uh, he's kind of a friend of mine. Sure. I'm planning to go down there. And uh, we could do a thing. And we, we can, can see half a supremacy. Yeah, yeah. Go down to Texas. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. Mm. All right. Next up. George just says it's hard to believe Winston watching anime. Well, <laughs> but that's where you got your roots. That's like your starting point, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, dude, like I ran an anime society, the first ever one in South Africa, and I started a magazine. So uh, I've got a video about that on my channel. Just it's go also a different vibe there yeah. than the, we had a massive stigma yeah. here in the U.S. But remember that. that anime never was available in South Africa. No. So I had to cool. bring I had to bring yeah, it you made to it cool. South Africa. It wasn't there before. So right. yeah, it was literally no one knew what it was. There was no weebs. No, no. There was you no, made weebs. Yeah, there was no like culture surrounding it. It was, you know, we, we created our own. So it was a bit different. I just finished uh, Hunter x Hunter, by the way. Excellent show. Okay, I don't know why I just plugged that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, what's next? Uh, Gordon Fleeman says, <laughs> okay. more hey, Vietnam laugh, or other name. Asian countries video. <laughs> Well, what, what, what? Say again. Uh, more Vietnam or okay. other Asian countries. Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, we've still got Vietnam content to release. I believe we're going to Japan next? Yes. Yeah, Japan or India? Japan, India, or South Korea. Or South Korea. That's right. You know... You don't um, need a visa for South Korea. No, I don't. No. Uh, I really kind of want to go to India. Me too. You know, the reason being that... Uh, okay... To be honest, I really want to go to Japan. Oh, okay. 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 No, I really do. No, like, talk. if it's just me, if I wanted Where's to the go, money? I got to pay no, you for chilling. No, because I absolutely... Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I absolutely love Japan. Sure. For the food and the drink and the atmosphere and stuff. Mm. It's my favorite place in the world, especially Tokyo. Um, and I want to go there for that. I want to go there to get drunk and hang out and just enjoy it. But... But that being said, that's too selfish. I, sure, me too. I agree. I want to go to India because it's, first of all, it is, I've been there before and it is a really interesting place. Mm. But it's something that I feel like our subscribers will get more out of. I agree. You I know? agree. So, well, we'll play it by ear. We'll play it yeah. by ear. Thank you very much. Next. All right. Um, MB Travel 72 asks, Subscriber meetup in Flushing, Queens would be great. You're from New York, right? I am. Um, I actually did a subscriber meetup in Flushing, Queens. It wasn't like a public thing. It's because I ran into a bunch of people. We all met up later. Okay. But yeah, um, super fun place. Definitely cool. Lots if, of legit Chinese food. If we're going to have subscriber meets, we'll definitely let everybody know. Yeah, don't like, worry about it. Yeah, so just... Wasn't that the one, the one you said like nobody came to? No, no, no. That was... In, I'm not going to mention where that was. <laughs> okay, yeah. Not in Ducks. Uh, Crimson Solis. Okay. Love from uh, Richmond, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, The Crimson. Old Dominion. We're going to go a little bit over today to finish some of these super chats. Yeah, yeah. Maybe try Stick around. skip some of the, the, the little the, the Yeah, we've only got two left. Oh, oh okay, sweet. Okay, so, cool. uh, so Michael Lacko yeah. says, Hi, I have a remote job and was thinking to visit and work from Thailand or Vietnam. What do you guys suggest? Love you, Winston, and your sidekick, JK. Both Love both of you. Thank you, oh, Mike. Yeah. Throwing some dude, shit dude. At, uh, like, I, he JK'd me out of it. Yeah, let's... <laughs> so, uh, Keep so um, his options were Thailand and Vietnam. Okay, Those, you go first. If you if you can work remotely, um, I can't think of a better place than probably Thailand because you've got the beaches and the yeah, because Vietnam doesn't have an entire coastline. This is country. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean that too. Um, but you know, I'm going to be honest with you. The Vietnam. Um, there's some beautiful beaches yeah the vietnam, vietnam what we went through in the north there was yeah. a lot of pollution yeah, exactly. yeah. there's a lot of industry and so you have to understand that vietnam is a growing country mm. it's much more chaotic mm. there's a lot more it's poor yeah um the thing about thailand is because it's set up for tourists mm. you will always be able to get the comforts from home sure so they it's will also be a developed country yeah it, you will be able to go down and have pizza that's almost as good as in chicago where sure. you're from because sure. there'll be a guy from chicago who's set up a little right. shop um and you've got completely unblocked internet as well vietnam is slightly blocked internet i'm 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 gonna have a little bit negative perspective on vietnam's future yes if they want to hold on to political legitimacy it's not going to be the same place as it is now 
problem. Oh, whereas Thailand is relatively free. Yeah, Thailand's very free, open, mm. smiley face kind of yeah. a place where you can set yeah, no, up. Yeah, it's more of an adventure, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, so you could set up and basically like, you know those those stupid ads, work from home or whatever, and you see someone at the <laughs> beach on like a chair. <laughs> you, you can know, be like, that guy. You can be that guy right. in Thailand. But um, uh, Vietnam is... I, I don't know, personally, like, I prefer Vietnam myself. Me too. I think it's yeah. more, and I'm not going to say exotic, it's more chaotic and fun adventure. Yes, there's a lot more growth going yes. on. There's a lot more potential. There's a lot more change. There's definitely easier yeah. ways to make quick money. Yeah. That's yeah, for yeah. sure. But if you wanted just a base, yeah. I'd say I'd Thailand's say Thailand way better. For sure, for and sure. then, you know, you could, if you're so inclined, you could go hang out in drum circles in the forest making tie-dye t-shirts. You could do that. We know a guy does that? We do know a guy that does that, actually. And that's just... Makes me want to puke. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that's a that's not a drum. Anyway. I, I guess I have to return that djembe drum that I bought you for your birthday. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. What's yeah, next? next? All right. Last but not least, we have Frankie T. Twenty Eleven mm-hmm. says, "Now that you guys are based out of America, are there any plans to expand content on your Facebook page?" And I want to point out that I donated exactly nine ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What a what a bargain. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Not ten dollars. Thank no, you very much. Great. Appreciate Thanks. that. Uh, I'm gonna say no. What do you mean, like on the Facebook page? No, I mean like we'll share everything we do, but Facebook to me is a very slowly dying medium. Mm. Um, it's not good. We've noticed our audiences on Facebook kind of migrating to other platforms as sure. well. So you'll see updates. Yeah, we're mm. not going to stop. No, no. Um, I think what you might see though is like what we're doing now, mm-hmm. being able to have this live show. Yeah. You know, you know that we weren't able to do this in China, mm. and that's because the internet was not stable enough and it's throttled. Yeah. So we could not ever pull off anything like this while we're in China. So this now gives us an option to have more content for you guys sure. being based here. Mm. But you also have to remember that we're always going to be flying in and out. So yeah. things you never are going to change. Where we are. Yeah. We like I know. said last time, we were in, we've been four countries in two months. And in fact, the next time you see our live stream is going to be in a completely different place. Oh, yeah. So, I forgot about that. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be we're changing everything up. So yeah. our next live stream won't be here. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, is that it, DM? You yeah, sure? I'll just uh, yeah. address a couple of questions for myself. Thank you. Yeah, don't forget, uh, you have to also choose a, at least one or two non-Super Chat questions that kind of... Yeah, oh, I, I actually did. I wrote one down, actually. Oh, Please. okay, cool. Keep going. So, um, I guess it wasn't a question, but someone just said, it's surprising that in a non-religious country, a quote-unquote atheist country like China, that mm. people would be so against uh, homosexuality. Sure. So, I, I was going to put it to you guys. How much of the traditional values of China do you think were co-opted by the uh, Communist Party. Okay, so uh, I can do this very succinctly. Okay. Uh, the first thing is actually culture that wasn't destroyed by Chairman Mao and the CCP, and that is the family values. Yes. And the second thing is actually under the Communist Party of China, homosexuality was also demonized as a moral kind of terror, something yeah. that will rip apart the fabric of Chinese society. So it was hand in hand, really. It kind of yeah. was a perfect poison. Correct. So that's kind of how that worked. DM. That's how it is. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, anything else? DM? Yeah, well, I was just going to say, I saw a lot of people, last time at least, calling me a cleric, a warlock, a wizard. Would you like a cleric? Everything under the sun. Yeah, I'm actually a lich. Okay. I just look very good for my age. <laughs> nice. Good. I also live in Lichfield, England. Oh, okay. Where else okay. would you live? You just dox where we are. Lichfield, <laughs> no, England. Hey, they don't know if we're broadcasting from the same place. That's very true. I said we were on the space station, so. That's very okay, true. Okay, sweet. I, you, I teleport us all over the place, remember? Yeah, that's yeah. true. It's yeah. part of his magic powers. <laughs> <laughs> sweet. Well, cool. is that it, DM? Um, that is about it. I mean, I could scroll back and find some more juicy content. Let's, but... let's throw in one more comment from, I mean, question. Yeah, we'll do one just, more. just from let's round it out. a non super chat one. I don't want people to think that we're only about money. Okay, yeah. Someone said, I'm about to start learning Chinese in college. Do you guys have any tips, advice for learning Chinese? That was from Alex Wright. Okay, I can easily do this. I've made now, I think, three videos about how to learn Chinese. You've done some too. Yeah, if you go on my channel, Lao86, look for a video called Can I Speak Chinese? and How I Learned to Speak Chinese. I went through my entire phase of how I did it. Yeah. I'm just going to add some very sure, quick notes please, here. Yeah. Uh, learn how to read and write Chinese. You know that everybody tries to put that off because it seems Sorry. so... Well, I mean, it <laughs> seems hard. difficult. Yeah. It really does, but it's not. Right. It's way easier than you might think. Mm. And I, it, it was a year and a half that I was in China, and I picked up all the phrases, and I knew how to order little things sure. and how much things cost. And, you know, 
but I, I kind of hit a wall and I was not improving and I just sucked. I could never have a conversation. And when I went to the Shenzhen University to study an actual language course where I learned how to read and write, suddenly everything started to make sense. Mm. And I could put it all together and I could suddenly put sentences together. I could understand what people were sure. saying better. So it was for me, what tipped me over the edge was learning how to read and write. Sure. And now I can recognize hundreds, thousands of characters. It's no big deal. I really think that depends on the personality as well. Mm. Because for me, uh, I'm not a visual learner. Okay. You're probably more practical. You're good at mechanics mm. and stuff. Mm. For me, it was uh, learning grammar first. Okay. And then st drilling the hell out of vocab and using it in conversation. So if, yeah. you, if you found some magical combination that well, we use. Well, to me, it was like, you know, when, when you hear somebody say ni hao, right. which just, you know, um, is hello. Mm. So if you go around your whole life thinking, oh, ni hao just means hello you're kind of like stuck. You don't realize that it's actually made out of two words. Sure, Me, sure. right. which is you, you and how, yeah. which is good. So right. you good. Right. And when you can recognize those two characters as separate, then you can start seeing like, oh, how true, ni how, same right. how. Now things are starting to make sense. Right. You know, ni this, ni that. And you start to see the different parts of the words sure. and everything. And you see sure. how a little combinations work. I think, it it, I think a really together. healthy balance between mm. the, the reading and writing thing versus yeah. like drilling grammar and then building vocab. I think that you'd have a potent combination. Sure. Everyone mm. will find their own way. But sure. I think don't discount learning yeah. the characters because that is integral. Don't think you can get away with it. I know no, a lot of people, no. oh, I'm really good at my oral Chinese. All I need to right. do, I never need to learn to read or write. That's a bunch of bollocks right. because when you're in China, signs don't have English written underneath no, them. Most of them, yeah. I got a friend who can speak kind of okay, but every time we'd go on a bike trip, I would be the one who'd have to it say, was so say weird. Look, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, hotel is over there. It's like, how, how do we find a hotel? I'm it's like, like well, dude, there's one right there. Or, there's right this, there. Yeah, yeah. I knew how to read the, the signs and right. he couldn't. So, you know, it's such a, yeah. So you learn the characters. Cool. Well, um, I'm going to say stay tuned. I'm going to mm -hmm. say two weeks from now, this yep. Thursday, we're going to have another episode. And yes. I also want to say this. Mm. If you guys are not pumped, we're going to make you pumped because next week's videos, your tomorrow video, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And my next Wednesday video is going to be spicy. Yeah. Picante. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Kind of like if you content. took a jalapeno and then added ghost peppers inside yeah, it's, of it it's stuffed and it surprises you yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, those are going to be amazing watch those for yeah. sure don't um, forget and don't forget on monday we yeah. have adv china as well yeah adv yeah. china it's ready ready to roll we're busy editing our next so so it'll be be up by then yeah uh we got you every wednesday yes um I'm Friday tomorrow. You'll yep. see my episode 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, every second Thursday, you get one of these. Yeah. Cool. Thank you to everyone that uh, dropped a super chat and watched. Yeah. Thank and you for don't, everyone. Don't forget that mm -hmm. this will be up right after we go off. Yeah. So, so if you, you didn't watch catch it live, yeah. and if you're watching this not live, thank you very much for sticking all the way to the end. We think you're awesome. And oh, we can't wait. Boy. Just before we say goodbye. Okay. Uh, because we do every once every other week with mm -hmm. this, make sure the bell button is clicked All because right. you won't get notifications. You'll be like, sure. where the hell is the episode? You sure, know what I mean? Sure. So the bell button and the subscribe button. Appreciate right. that. Cool. Okay. I was going to say, don't forget to stay awesome.